In recent years, there has been growing buzz about India potentially taking over from China as the world's primary manufacturing hub. Major corporations and businesses have been exploring new investment opportunities beyond China. There are two key drivers for this shift. First, many businesses experienced disruptions in their supply chains when China imposed strict lockdowns. Second, and perhaps most crucially, is the escalating tension between the United States and China. Trade disputes initiated during the Trump administration and semiconductor export controls implemented by the Biden administration have made companies reconsider their investments in China. In this context, India has emerged as a beneficiary of these developments. The big question is whether India can assume China's role as the world's leading manufacturing center or even outperform China's economy in the foreseeable future. In today's video, we will delve into these topics. If you have an interest in such discussions, please consider subscribing to our channel before proceeding. Now, let's explore whether India has the potential to supplant China as the world's economic powerhouse. China versus India's population In April 2023, India is expected to surpass China as the world's most populous country, leading many to believe that India's rising population will replace China as the world's leading manufacturing hub. But is this really the case? Let's delve deeper into this. At first glance, India and China seem quite similar. Both countries have populations of 1.4 billion, and they are each set to add around 30 million people to their consumer class this year. Over the past decade, both nations have experienced impressive economic growth, ranging from 5% to 7% annually. From a broad perspective, India appears to be following in China's footsteps. However, when we closely examine the two nations, their consumer classes exhibit some key differences. First, China's consumer class remains the largest, with 899 million people, while India's stands at 473 million. Although their growth in 2023 is comparable, with China adding 36 million and India 31 million new consumers, it's anticipated that China will maintain a larger consumer class for at least the next two decades. China is projected to be the first country to reach 1 billion consumers by around 2027. And second, China's consumer class is predominantly urban, with four out of five consumers residing in cities. India's consumer class is more dispersed, with only about half living in urban areas. China's consumers are concentrated in large cities, with an estimated 553 million people living in cities with over 1 million inhabitants by 2030. In comparison, India is projected to have 290 million people in large cities by the same year. These statistics suggest that, despite its numerical growth, India's new consumers may be harder to reach compared to China's. Considering the differing characteristics of India and China's consumer classes, it's evident that India still lags behind China and may not surpass it in the near future. Are big companies shifting from China to India? Even though people have been talking about India as a land of great opportunities, we're not seeing many big companies from around the world moving their production to India, or local companies investing a lot more to take advantage of this growth. Instead, India's economy is still having a hard time recovering from the pandemic. When we look at what's coming in the future, it doesn't look much better. The number of new projects in India, like new business ideas or plans, has gone down again after a little increase following the pandemic. It's not anywhere near the numbers we saw back during the economic boom of the early 2000s. What's more, there's not much proof that foreign companies are moving their production to India. Even though many people say India is a great place to invest, the actual amount of foreign investment has been pretty much the same for the past 10 years, at about 2% of the country's total economic output. And for every company that's found success in India, many others have run into problems, including big names like Google, Walmart, Vodafone, and General Motors. Even Amazon, a huge online shopping company, has faced difficulties in India and recently decided to close down three of its Indian businesses in areas like food delivery, education, and selling things in bulk. So, why are these big companies hesitant to move their business from China to India? The reason is the same for both international and local companies, they see the risks as being too high. The challenges and complications of doing business in India, whether you're from another country or based in India, are making it tough for the expected shift from China to India to happen. 
Investing in India can be risky. When you decide to invest your money in India, there are some big risks you need to know about. Two of them are especially important. First, companies worry that the rules they follow when they start investing might change later. These changes can make their investments lose money. Even if the rules look good on paper, companies can't be sure that these rules will be applied fairly. Sometimes, they're enforced in favor of big Indian companies that the government likes. These problems have already caused some serious issues. For example, telecom companies have seen their profits go down because the rules kept changing. Energy providers found it hard to charge customers more when their costs went up, and they struggled to get the money the state electricity boards promised to pay them. E-commerce companies learned that the government can change the rules about what they're allowed to do, even after they've spent a lot of money following the original rules. Meanwhile, these big Indian companies, known as national champions, have been making a lot of money. In August 2022, nearly 80% of the $160 billion increase in India's stock market was because of one huge company, the Adani Group. The founder of this group suddenly became the third richest person in the world. This means that things are not very fair for everyone else. Foreign companies can't even lower their risks by teaming up with big Indian companies. It's risky because these big Indian companies are also trying to be the best in the same areas, like e-commerce. Other Indian companies don't want to compete in fields where these big groups get a lot of help from the government. India's Protective Trade Policies Besides the increased risks, there are several other reasons why international companies might be hesitant about investing in India. One crucial aspect of the PLI scheme, for instance, involves charging high taxes on parts made abroad. The goal is to encourage companies relocating to India to buy their materials from the domestic market. However, this approach creates a significant barrier for most global corporations because products in many industries are typically constructed from hundreds or even thousands of components obtained from the most competitive producers worldwide. By placing heavy taxes on these components, New Delhi has effectively discouraged companies from considering investments in the country. For companies like Apple that plan to sell their products in India, the issue of high import taxes may be less problematic. However, such companies are few and far between because India's market of middle-class consumers is surprisingly small, totaling no more than $500 billion in contrast to the global market, which is valued at around $30 trillion. According to study, only 15% of the Indian population can be classified as middle class based on international definitions. As a result, for most companies, the potential risks of doing business in India outweigh the possible benefits. Recognizing the tension between its protective trade policies and the aim of making India more globally competitive, New Delhi has recently engaged in negotiations for free trade agreements with Australia and the United Arab Emirates. However, these efforts, involving economies that are smaller and less dynamic, are overshadowed by India's competitors in Asia. For instance, Vietnam has signed 10 free trade agreements since 2010, including deals with China, the European Union, the United Kingdom, and its regional partners in ASEAN. The world's continued reliance on China China remains the central hub of global value chains, maintaining its status as the leading trading partner for over 120 countries, including prominent nations like Japan, South Korea, and Vietnam. Additionally, China holds the position of the European Union and ASEAN's largest external trading partner. India itself relies significantly on China, with over a quarter of the value in Indian exports being attributed to Chinese contributions. This was not the case at the beginning of the century, India's dependence on China has grown substantially over the past two decades. Surprisingly, this dependence has continued to rise even as Indian troops have been engaged in tense standoffs with China due to the border clash, despite the Indian government's talk of achieving self-reliance. Due to the pandemic disrupting global supply chains and the escalating tension between China and the United States, many multinational companies are considering shifting parts of their production operations away from China. However, diversification comes with its challenges, and it's neither a simple nor cost-effective process. The economic challenges posed by the pandemic have left many companies short of funds, making it difficult for them to invest in other countries immediately. 
In the short term, it remains a complex task for India or any other large economy to disentangle itself from its dependence on China. After going through all these data and information, do you think India can replace China as the world's factory? Or that India's economy is able to surpass China in the near future? The answer is clear. While India certainly possesses significant potential, surpassing China in terms of manufacturing and economic prowess may not be feasible, at least not in the near future. If you find this content engaging, please consider clicking the like button to express your support. Moreover, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with fascinating videos on the developments in Asia.